Welcome to Civil Cafe's Current Affairs module, where we will discuss important current affairs topic as well as far as our UPSC examination is concerned. Let's move in one by one. So the first topic is the Integrated Power Development Scheme. So the Integrated Power Development Scheme is a scheme uh, that has been it's a flagship scheme that has been put forward by the Ministry of Powers. Now the main aim is to provide 24/7 power, reduce AT and C that is uh, losses and also to ensure power to all so these are the aims now the main steps uh, ipds undertakes is one is to uh, strengthen the sub transmission distribution uh, network against again uh, in the urban region second is to uh, you know to meter in uh, the distribution transformers feeders consumers in the urban region the third point is like the um, you know the resource uh, augmentation and it enablement in distribution sector and the fourth thing is the method of uh, doing underground uh, cabling as well as solar panels so that is the matter that has come up here so a uh, 50 kilowatt power uh, solar rooftop has been inaugurated because one of the steps uh, uh, the five steps that ipds has is to set up solar panels so uh, the few other extra points is like all discounts including private sector discounts and state part will be eligible for financial assistance under the scheme and the uh, power finance corporation is a nodal agency. Now next is the biotech Kizan project or it stands for the biotech Krishi innovation science application network. It's actually a you know farmer to scientist link where the main focus is to provide solutions with respect to soil water seed and market so solutions to these four uh, domains is what the uh, uh, the uh, biotech design basically looks upon for now the main aim is to work for the for the farmers the process will be done by the farmers it, it looks forward to you know empower women connect agricultural processes with globally bring or uh, impact uh, agriculture sector globally then spread it across the 15 agro climatic regions that is the aim now the biotech cuisine has uh, has a you know a uh, hub and spoke model so the hub and spoke model basically says is like there will be a farmer organization in every uh, 15 every 15 uh, agro climatic regions so these the hub will be connected to the science labs the krishi vigyan kendras the uh, agriculture universities in these locality and the problems especially with respect to soil market seed and market soil water seed and market would be uh, discussed with these information would be provided to the farmers through these uh, farmer organizations so that is the main thing it's under the uh, you know the ministry of uh, biotechnology under uh, dst so these are the important points i've just uh, uh, just highlighted the same the thing is like it is it is looking forward to benefit around 2 lakh farmers now similar to uh, the telephone exchanges that we used to have or still we have the same is the case with national internet exchange of india so the prime focus is the nixi would act as the hub so there are the people like us who are the who needs information and there will be a place like google okay what it used to happen is we want a search result so we are sending a request it used to go to a foreign uh, you know a foreign exchange then it used to route to google and we retrieve back so due to this what happens is there will be higher uh, latency uh, and also huge cost what happens is just like a, a telephone exchange where uh, the call from one place comes to a hub that place is switches to the next place to where the phone needs to go same way our request for some information would be reaching nixie and nixie would be directly uh, leading to you know to google so there will be reduced latency so nixie uh, is the india's first neutral internet exchange uh, it basically looks upon for multilateral peering uh, between uh, internet service providers across nations across nodes uh, it basically uses uh, looking forward to reduce upstream costs uh, by peering and also to reduce uh, latency so the main aim of nixie is to provide internet for all and reduce latency 
so it ha it is having the right to send the dot net domain okay so it has already sold to 2.6 million people and some uh, what is so beautiful is like we are actually able to the dot uh, uh, nixi is actually able to provide services to around 22 local languages so by this they are able to uh, garner uh, internet access to uneducated people and they also provides internet uh, protocol addresses you know in a much reduced rates so this is the uh, hold up regarding nixi now uh, the bt is something which we all know that is uh, bacillus thuringiensis that is a soil bacteria uh, and certain genes of those would be added to uh, uh, the plant okay so that it that uh, that that plant would act uh, or it will generate certain poisons which uh, would uh, or toxins which will be harmful to the insects uh, but not for the human beings so uh, such an idea would reduce the dependency on uh, you know the pesticides and thereby reducing their presence in runoffs so that is what well, that is uh, bt and uh, bt cottons are very common now what we have is is uh, you know the herbicide resistant uh, bts what the issue is with these farmers can actually use herbicides in order to kill the weeds or the herbs you know these uh, weeds uh, they actually take away the nutrients uh, which are essential for the cotton so if uh, these uh, herbicides are being used these uh, weeds won't be grown so that is the advantage and it will be it, it won't be harmful for the cotton plant but the issue is these uh, uh, similar to viruses that we discussed these uh, plants uh, these herbs they become herbicide tolerant very easily and it could be spread this uh, tolerance could be spread even through pollens and thereby there is a chance of uh, resulting super weeds so this is not a sustenant uh, uh, sustenant process also htbt is not recognized by the uh, the genetic engineering approval committee so that is the news that is a whole thing so the history of bt uh, which we have always uh, discussed upon <laughs> now uh, in odisha we have first for the first time found the gharials in its uh, natural nesting uh, uh, right so they were into, so uh, odisha is so famous because it is only place where you can find all three varieties of freshwater mugger and salt crocodile let's distinguish between them gharials are actually a critically endangered species uh, they are distinguished uh, with their uh, long snout long thin snout they basically finding clear uh, freshwater river system congregating at the uh, river beds they are basically found along chambal girwa son nepal in the narayani river they are only found in india and nepal currently muggers is actually medium to large size crocodile they are a vulnerable species they are found in india sri lanka pakistan nepal and uh, bangladesh they actually they have this unique feature of whole nesting species uh, where they you know in the dry season they lay their eggs the salt walker crocodile is the largest of all crocodile and the largest reptile on the in the world so they are actually found in all the brackish and freshwater regions in eastern india southeast asia northern australia so salt walk crocodile is extremely rare uh, basically in indian con uh, in the indian subcontinent but the bitarganiga has one the, it's actually considered as a part of least concern also in sundarbans now uh, who has uh, come up with a very interesting report of which one has to uh, understand about the place called agbo bloche in khana which is the world's uh, largest e waste dump and as uh, the information as the in, uh, image possess uh, it's where uh, kids are being utilized uh, for retrieving these things so what happens is the un has come up with a report in order to see as to how much is the informal e waste recycling actually uh, affects the health of kids the kids are being utilized and not the elderly people because they have got small hands right so fingers so they can easily retrieve uh, these uh, metals and elements it says that there are around 18 million kids and around 13 million women including unknown number of child bearing women so look at the uh, you know look at the kind of uh, vulnerability they are in so these uh, matters are being discussed with the uh, who's children and digital dump sites report now india for the first time has um, uh, patched up uh, with the European uh, Union naval force for a joint exercise in the Gulf of Aden uh, from India Trikund uh, Trikund was sent the naval force so 
uh, it uh, uh, India actually associated with Italian, Spanish, and uh, French uh, navies. We undertook basically advanced air defense and anti-submarine activities and certain other rescue activities. The aim was to uh, look upon or check upon the uh, privacy, so the uh, the, um, the, pr the the pirates uh, that have been present on that area. Also, India is a part of a charter where uh, vessels will be protected as per the United Nations World Food Program. So, in order to undertake these uh, properties or these activities, India has been a part of it. Now, Gulf of Aden is a very, very important uh, region, which is a natural sea link between the Red Sea and the Arabian Sea. Now, World Competitive Report uh, uh, was, uh, Competitiveness Report was uh, released by the Institute of Management. So, which has said that European Union dominates the list with the Western European nations leading. So, it basically shows that how resilient they were during the pandemic time. China is in its rise. USA is its stable range. Uh, India is in its, uh, has actually maintained a bit. So, basically the government efficiency improvement uh, has actually aided that. So, one prime uh, uh, understanding from World Competitiveness Report is that if there is better investment in innovation when digitization is activated where welfare activity is ingrained by the government there is better social cohesion and thereby the nation would be more competitive enough uh, to address the possibilities of the world as well as able to track uh, the pandemic situation now the institute of uh, peace and uh, Eco economy and peace has uh, released the uh, global peace index so uh, it actually basically look upon the uh, ongoing conflict, safety and security and militarization. Uh, as as I've just said, Eastern European countries are uh, leading. India is uh, in one of the backmost thing. Uh, out of 163, we are in the 135th uh, position. And uh, Bhutan and Nepal are much better in Southeast Asia. Uh, Bangladesh is even better than uh, India, uh, but uh, Pakistan fares poorly. Now, uh, the uh, corporatization of ordnance uh, factories uh, has come up into seven different companies. So basically, the ordnance factory is actually where, which is uh, last day we discussed about the different departments under different. So one is the uh, production department of which ordnance uh, is a part of it. Ordnance factory is a part of it. So the weapons, ammunition, supplies are basically a part of it. So it, um, the ordnance factory basically provides a civilian military grade arm and ammunition, explosives and uh, military workers. So the government is actually looking forward to restructure it. What happens is the CAG report has said that there is a fall in the uh, fall of short of the targets that is achieved and only 49 percentage of the targets were achieved. So there is significant inefficiency in production and delay has been uh, observed by the uh, CAG and it has suggested for a overhauling. Now the this uh, new restructuring is very important because government is planning to uh, improve productivity and also to uh, make a po profitable uh, essence uh, enhance the competitiveness and improve the quality and the cost uh, by this uh, the shortcomings of what um, CAG has said could be uh, reduced and they uh, since they have been divided into multiple companies more autonomy could be uh, earned now uh, the challenge or the uh, the conflict that has arised on the same factor as the uh, f uh, the fear that ordinance factory when uh, chunked into different companies would finally end up in privatization now new corporate entities could come in with the uh, depleting environment from the ordinance factory and uh, greater autonomy and lesser government structure would eventually lead to a wrong path so that is what uh, the uh, the people who are talking against the moment is saying now let's move on to the uh, mains uh, area. So uh, there are multiple issues that have come up with respect to the transparency in the uh, electoral bonds. So uh, there are multiple um, incidents uh, that have uh, come up for the same. So looking into that direction, need for disclosing of the electoral bonds is there. Uh, electoral bonds are always been a discussion altogether uh, we know. So it was, uh, it's a, you know, it's like a bond. It's a financial instrument. Uh, where you one can provide donations to the political party anonymously so it would be in uh, different uh, you know different multiples without any maximum limit sbi is the sole proprietary for it and it could be designated to one particular uh, party anonymously and uh, the it's actually available for the purchase of people for certain time times period now it is actually 
how how one uh, how does one come to know about an electoral bond as of yet it will be notified by the banks okay it it will be issues the donor can uh, buy an electoral bond okay the donor can give his or her choice to who, which party it should come and the party deposits a bond in an account and the details are with the election commission now electoral bonds was uh, uh, introduced by the former uh, finance minister uh, jaitley in order to filter political parties uh, formed on a, pre a pretext of um, tax evasion reduce black money in politics a uh, filing of return to election commission being activated improve transparency and accountability uh, destroy prevent uh, destroy parallel currency and principled autonomy to prevent penalization to donors but what actually happens is it is not the case so uh, there was a case that have uh, come up by adr so it's actually uh, the supreme court actually downplayed some of the uh, concerns of corrupting uh, inf corrupt influences that have come up so it has it has offered at uh, the voters with a uh, you know with an idea of matching match the following so earlier only profit making uh, domestic companies could contribute to political parties now even loss making companies can do it now early foreign companies or or uh, foreign companies where the controlling stock were held could not contribute now they can because it is anonymous and political parties were theoretically be fully funded by foreign company operating on foreign entity or even by shell company so the transparency that was undertook is not what we see now you have got another form of anonymity in a donation so uh, this this has actually reduced public and legislative uh, oversight now sbi is actually in complete uh, completely in part of it parliament electoral commission opposition party do not have information not even to public who has sent to whom now uh, track the potential company and firm uh, donors is not impossible for an average uh, voter so that is why the supreme court has come up with the match the following thing okay even uh, rti application to sbi can only uh, provide us who has given to whom okay and uh, supreme court or the legislature could order the full and real time disclosure to the actual benefit of transparency and accountability so that is the possibility uh, and even civil society is unable to uh, garner what is actually happening now the electoral bond has uh, you know has compromised the right to know who gives to whom it actually even though came up as a uh, you know as a panacea for free and fair election the way things are happening is that the whole purpose is working against free and fair election okay now the uh, the ideas of the representation of people act is completely been there there are unnecessary amendments been there now earlier the corruption that was used to happen with respect to electoral funding uh, used to have a channel didn't have a channel right now you have uh, you are we have created a corrupt channel for the very same so we are actually institutionalizing corruptions so that is the uh, uh, these are the main uh, negative highlights with respect to um, you know electoral bond so what could be done we must ensure transparency in election funding another uh, another idea that has come up with the state funding for the same now judiciary has to uh, come in play to uh, in, uh, you know in order to uh, play it up which is not the right way to uh, but uh, and uh, the transparency activity has to be uh, transmitted towards the civic culture so as in whole the whole system is good the electoral bond as a system is good but it needs to be more accountable and transferable in order to achieve what we fear is free and fair election now the the relation with india and australia is always uh, really really uh, hype because of similarity of uh, being you know the instance of apartheid or being uh, being under colonization uh, but uh, what is interesting is it's not like the superpower that are trying to colonize uh, africa but the new era countries like india china japan are all uh, finding its way to you know garner a uh, support from um, africa so the whole idea of india africa relationship is what we are looking up so beyond historical uh, process uh, africa is very significant for india uh, because it can help provide the uh, energy need and mineral need for india it's a big market for indian products to be uh, sold and there are certain uh, regions so there are certain growth poles uh, in africa which could be seen as a potential fdi zone for india and earn more money so it is like market a paka market Uh, we have a, a cute mix of uh, resources and oil and also for uh, foreign 
investment now india over the year uh, is a part of it so india has its uh, duty free uh, tra- uh, you know tariff preferential scheme for the least development african countries we are having multi multilateral engagements through the india africa forum summits now we have got the uh, you know technical assistance and training to the personnel under the uh, india technical and economical cooperation now for africa capacity building foundation india has given 1 million uh, us dollars for sustainable development it, india has invested around 100 million dollars in the pan africa e network to reduce the uh, digital divide in africa uh, training the army training is there now india and japan has come together for the asia africa growth corridor a vision document for that now uh, the, uh, the, the 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 whole document uh, pitch for a uh, asia africa growth corridor Uh, which could bring uh, cooperative projects you know improve uh, infrastructure now institutionalized connectivity and skill enhancement also india uh, has uh, its own you know long term and short term uh, plans and educational uh, education part also india helps a lot now the area of cooperation uh, is actually different so trade according to cii india exports and imports from africa stood at an equilibrium Uh, pace in africa south africa nigeria egypt kenya and tongo are the five markets for india and imports basically happens from south africa nigeria egypt angola and guinea india's top three export to africa are mineral and uh, mineral fuel and oil pharmaceutical that uh, pharmaceutical products and vehicles now crude oil a uh, pearl precious and semi precious stones are the imports to india in capacity building india is uh, working a lot in setting up health as well as uh, education now uh, there is a, uh, there is a very strong maritime cooperation especially with respect to building up renewable energy and blue economy now food security is a big issue because the uh, whole african region is uh, undernourished of uh, fear uh, facing uh, you know facing uh, food scarcity india is wor- working on that uh, india uh, under the eit tech uh, uh, initiative have helped uh, providing covid 19 pandemic we are also part of the covin scheme now the hydrochloroquine uh, was uh, provided to the african nations now e governance initiatives in africa needs to be pertinent so under the itech india has uh, helped it out already we have just mentioned about the pan africa e network through which uh, we have built up the digital uh, networks in india but there are certain challenges that india is facing with africa one is the presence of china china is giving uh, soft loans and thereby and india cannot uh, you know pay to that level what china basically hits now even though uh, africa is a good uh, gr- ground uh, but uh, comparing among different continents africa is really really lagging uh, behind in vaccination the way uh, the pandemic has been addressed so the covid impact in africa is terrible um, tribal uprising civil uh, unrest and divisions uh, within africa is a bit a big confusion which actually hinders india in uh, investing in such uh, regions also the presence of terrorist groups uh, the kidnapping the pri- uh, the pirates all has uh, endured a uh, worked as a challenge for investment in africa but india can actually uh, work along because we also face certain similar issues so the expertise that we have could be extended to them uh, there are certain regions where we can uh, build in our own goodwill especially through health uh, providing uh, the technology that we have in space uh, the computer uh, or the digitization steps where india can ha- even though uh, uh, we cannot invest as much as china but we can give certain uh, you know potentially direct impact to them we can help uh, china in countering uh, terrorist activities be a part of the be a part of reducing the uh, civic tensions there uh, ally along with um, africa and bring them in forefront along with india to the world and uh, working together gandhi ji has learned things from africa and come over to india india can also lend its hand to you know in uh, countering such issues in africa so these are the important current affairs topic i guess uh, i was able to uh, explain uh, things uh, with uh, clarity and also give you a quick um, you know quick important rush on the different matters do read uh, the material once again and thereby earn a more hand or grasp over the topic We'll come up with uh, more updates and uh, news of the past weeks in our updates until then goodbye